in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you okay thank you for watching be blessed we give you all the family can we just lift up our hands and say lord we thank you we bless you inside and outside lift up your hands as we worship lord we give you praise you have done great things great things in our midst thank him for the miracles thank him for the manifestation of his word thank him for salvation Lord, we give you praise. Le pa kabaro sanda balia kabaka sekete baba. We come with grateful hearts. We give you praise. We give you praise. Le pa ra sota balia kababa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For those of you who have been here for a while you understand that we are a grateful people hallelujah we'll never forget his benefits hallelujah psalm 103 says bless the lord O my soul and all that is within me bless his name said bless the lord O my soul and forget not his benefits who forgiveth our sins who healeth our diseases and delivereth us from destruction and so Every time we come before his presence, it's good to just worship him and to give him praise for life, for health, for his word, access to his word. Hallelujah. Said the entrance of thy word, give it light. Light, understanding, even unto the simple. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless you. Thank you because tonight you will do great things in our midst. We have come for koinonia, a time of intimacy. We pray that you speak from the throne and cause that our ears hear the voice of our King in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Just walk up to 20 people. Tell them it's good to see you again. Your presence gives me hope that we are coming. Come on, walk up to 20 people. Inside and outside, don't be antisocial, it's part of Koinonia. That's all right. You can go back to your seat. I appreciate the Lord. 
The Bible says a merry heart do it good like medicine. Please be seated. Hallelujah. We are so grateful for the things that God is doing in our midst. Hallelujah. God is doing great and awesome things. We've been celebrating the wonder-working power of God in our midst. Hallelujah. And the transforming power of His Word. We thank Him for the opportunity to receive from Him again. Hallelujah. We've been taking a series on the kingdom. And... Um, Angels still speak. Hallelujah. Where people who believe in the realm of the spirit and the operation of spirit beings, the Bible says, Here I come to Mount Zion, and it lets us know we are not alone. Hallelujah. Three days ago, a friend of mine called me early in the morning. And um, she said, Josh, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay, what's, what's, what's wrong? And she said, I had a dream. And I got a song from that dream. And I want to share it with you. I said, really? And she said, it was a dream. I was ministering somewhere. And she was not even in the ground where the meeting was. And she had the song. It was a powerful song from the Spirit. And she heard my voice. I was singing it. And um, it was so powerful according to her description. She said the place was so charged. There were all kinds of miracles. People repenting, opening up their hearts to the Lord. And um, when she woke up, she came with a song. And I want to teach us the song. Very powerful. It's our culture to receive heavenly songs and communicate them. Hallelujah, because we are a family. Hallelujah. So we're going to sing the song. I'd like you to receive it in your spirit. Many of you just like new songs. Thank God for the next one. No, 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 no. You see, God gives songs to announce seasons. Hallelujah. Jewish songs were used to announce seasons. So when you heard a Jew sing, it would give you an understanding of the seasons that they were in. If it was a Passover, they had songs. If it was the Day of Atonement called Yom Kippur, they had songs that they would sing. And so I believe that this song came prophetically, coinciding with the great things that God is doing in this season. Hallelujah. Very powerful song. The song is a revelation of uh, Matthew 21, the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just listen and let it bless your heart. Are you ready, people? Hallelujah. Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Holy, holy. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. There's a part that says Hosanna. 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 Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Worship us, can you help me? Holy. Oh, holy. Just listen to the song and let it enter your spirit. Unedited, we didn't change it exactly as it came from the realm of the spirit. In the name of our God. Who comes 
blessed is he who comes in the name. Can we try it now? The whole congregation, holy, can you sing it? Holy, holy, blessed is he. Worship us, sing holy. Just the worship us. Help me worship us. It was a triumphant entry in the name of our God. And he rode upon an ass that no man had sat upon. And every time I believe that this song could the season God is announcing to us that it's a season, a triumphant end, riding upon a horse. And that's why we are joining him to sing Hosanna. We are saying Hosanna. Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name. Blessed is he who comes in the name of One more time. Hosanna, Hosanna. family of faith we understand what you are communicating and we release our spirits Lord we align with the heavens you have brought this song from the realm of the spirit on a detail to confirm a season that you are bringing us into Lord indeed we declare blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. In one minute, just say, Lord, I receive. I connect my spirit with the revelation of this song. A triumphant entry into our destinies, into the new levels of grace, new levels of his spirit. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we hear your voice and we yield our spirits. Like Samuel before the ark, we declare, speak for we are listening. We have ears to hear that which you communicate unto us in the secret. Lord, we are ready to declare it as ambassadors upon the mountaintop. We open up our spirits for this season of triumphant entry. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, friends, let me tell you something. The Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with them that fear him. And he will show them his covenants. When you make God's ways your way, he will communicate to you the things of the Spirit. So that you will align yourself in this realm with what is happening in the Spirit. That's the secret of success. That's the secret of increase. That's the secret of impact. That it be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Until you understand the operation of the heavens, you have no right to do anything on the earth. And it's our job here at Koinonia to listen. Habakkuk chapter 2 says, I will stand upon the watch, my watch, and set myself upon the tower. And I will see what the Lord will say. The Bible says, what I show you in the secret, declare thou on the mountaintop. And it's our job to rest our ears on the heart of the Father to hear what He's communicating for every season. God is preparing us, training us, fashioning us by His Spirit to make us relevant even in this time and in this season. And hear me, friends, if you found your way into this place, I'd like you to know that God brought you by His Spirit to build, to equip, to empower you. He said, Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. It takes understanding. He said he made many lights, but he made two great lights. One light to rule in the day and another light to rule in the night. If you don't have that light, you cannot rule in the day and you cannot rule in the night. There is a dimension of light that grants you access even in the night so that you rule. And God is communicating these lights and these truths unto us. And Father, we thank you. It's a privilege and we respect it. We don't just believe in you, we respect you. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Please be seated. We began a series last week on the kingdom. Hallelujah. How many of us were blessed last week? Praise God. We began to establish. Please take out your pen, your writing materials. It's a teaching, so... As much as possible, whenever you're coming for a meeting like this, come with your writing materials. God is teaching and building us. There's only so much your mind can at a time. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And so I began a teaching last week and I began to explain to us the concept of the kingdom, how that the word kingdom comes from two words. It means the domain of the king. Hallelujah. How many of us still remember that? And we began to explain how that in the system of God, the kingdom of God is everywhere the influence and the, the authority, the rulership, the dominion of the king is exercised, is permitted to find expression. Hallelujah. And we began to talk about the concept of a colony and a motherland. How many of you remember that? We began to explain how that a colony is a replica of a mother kingdom. And that every time a colony is created, it is created either by conquest. You fight and gain access to that colony. Or you find a virgin land and occupy it. Hallelujah. The, a colony is, is meant to be an extension of the mother kingdom. And I did tell us that in a kingdom system, everything around a kingdom system revolves around the king. Hallelujah. In a democracy, we have people living for themselves. For instance... In America, you can decide to walk up naked. I can decide to walk naked tomorrow. And when people say, Josh, are you okay? I say, what is your business? We are in a democracy. But in a kingdom system, everyone lives for the king. Hallelujah. If at any point you were found doing anything that was contrary to the counsel of the king, you were termed a rebel. Hallelujah. And I began to explain to us that we are not just believers. We are not just born again Christians, but we are citizens of a kingdom. Hallelujah. And that means we owe our loyalty and allegiance not just to our Savior, not just to our Lord, but to our King. Many know Him as Savior. Many know Him as Lord. But few know Him as King. And Daniel speaking said that His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And Isaiah reiterating said of the increase of His kingdom and His peace, there shall be no end. 
and God is preparing us to understand the concept and the structure of the kingdom because for many people Christianity is just a blind race a race out of hell to heaven and we stop there and there are many believers who are, are not partnering with the Holy Spirit and every time you see our posters when we write koinonia we write intimacy and partnership that we understand his ways in intimacy and then we partner with him hallelujah praise the Lord and then we began to explain how that man was given dominion Adam was given a kingdom are you listening to me Adam was not given a religion he was given a kingdom Genesis 1 26 he said have dominion the word dominion is a language of royalty it says rule and Adam lost and gave the keys to Satan hallelujah and I did tell us that the entire Bible can be summarized thus the king has a kingdom and out of his love desires to extend his rule and leadership and influence through citizens in the colony of his kingdom called earth hallelujah and for a period of time man walked in the council of the kingdom he sent his governor the governor of the kingdom is the spirit of God I told us the concept of the governor that the governor is sent by the mother kingdom to bring the citizens of the colony to alignment with the values the culture the principles of the mother kingdom that's the primary assignment of the governor he's a representative of the king hallelujah and then he begins to educate and reorient the citizens of that strange land and he begins to cause them to conform with the culture and the character of the king and there are certain benefits when they assume position as kingdom citizens every kingdom has systems has an economic system to meet the economic needs of the people has a political system every kingdom has a system for rest and and all of these things we are going to be discussing it hallelujah there are many believers who do not understand the assignment of a true christian on the earth for many of us we think our assignments are just to win souls and one day fly to heaven or run away from hell or get married and have children and grow old and then say i've contributed my quota to the planet there's more hallelujah say after me i am an ambassador a representative of the kingdom hallelujah and so from genesis chapter 3 until um matthew chapter 1 the coming of jesus he was the kingdom lost you can summarize everything the kingdom was lost hallelujah it was not God's original design for the nation of Israel to have kings he desired their king it's out of their strong heart and they were a stiff-necked people hallelujah and so he told Samuel to go and anoint Saul and then David and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when Jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of Israel understood the concept of kingdom and then Jesus showed up John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God hallelujah and when Jesus stepped upon the planet he began to speak about the kingdom hallelujah started talking about the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is like unto this the kingdom of God is like unto this he began to liken the kingdom to many things and all through his work on earth he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom when he showed love it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracles, signs and wonders, it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom. And then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor. In chapter 15 and 16, he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus, the comforter, the standby, the advocate, the helper, the strengthener, the guide, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And I did tell us that Jesus, for our sake, he came to restore the kingdom. Hear me. The primary purpose of Jesus was not to come and take us to heaven. Don't stone me yet. It's a teaching. Hallelujah. The primary purpose of Jesus was to restore the kingdom. To restore the kingdom. That's why Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says, We have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests, and we shall rule in this life, in this earth. Hallelujah. 
and Jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the Christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said I will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lose in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter 1 says I am he that was dead and now is alive and I hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of Matthew to John was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from Acts chapter 1 down onto Jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the Bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then Paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the Holy Spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom and then the Bible ends in the book of Revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of Revelation is a prophetic book that reveals Christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the Bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to run into heaven we are not staying very long here we're coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages of judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films I'll tell you two reasons number one the Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you Jesus let's continue Revelations chapter 11 Lord let your word be strong in our hearts God is reorienting us so that we understand that Christianity is a kingdom system it's not just a religion like many others are you listening to me many of us think okay it's just a religion and then one day one day something will happen I will die no 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 and to equip us to be relevant Revelations 11 verse 15 if you are there say amen and the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay I like the rendition in amplified the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom the systems of this world the word world here is the Greek word cosmos the social system of the world he said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ and he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open 
Hallelujah. I'll be talking on kingdom advancement, a continuation of the series, kingdom advancement, advancing the frontiers of the kingdom. We stopped last week by helping us understand that Jesus came to restore the kingdom. Say after me, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. And he did restore the kingdom. Say one more time, Jesus Christ came to restore the kingdom. Hallelujah. And not just to restore the kingdom, but to restore the citizens of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why he died. That's why he went through everything he went through. Jesus Christ bled and he cried, he wept, was beaten by cruel and wicked people. He went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us. Hallelujah. And the next step, when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored, the next step is to receive the kingdom. Hallelujah. Say after me, the next step is to receive the kingdom. How do you receive the kingdom? By embracing the king of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's what we call being born again. Hallelujah. Being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom. So when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again, we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing. We're talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why you come up and say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you rose again for me. And you say, I declare that you are Lord of my life. Hallelujah. Lord of my life. You are the king. I choose to submit to your governing authority, thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom. And every time you make that decision, as a proof, he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life. It is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us, but he can live in us. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you following me now? very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because hitherto by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in Adam to the governing authority of Satan hallelujah that's why the Bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as an unbeliever the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do and we say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah 
your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you, you you get born again you are giving your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says the whole, when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom hallelujah he will first and foremost walk on your mindset say after me mindset when he walks upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us to understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16. it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattered and yet increased it. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. And is antagonistic to the ways of the world. Hallelujah. And the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything. He allows your will to come into play. So you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him. And it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church. And let me tell you something. Everything you ever have and everything you ever become, if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom, it will kill you. That's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king. Are you following me now? And so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom. 
the Holy Spirit. And God designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again, your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor. Said, my sheep hear my voice. He didn't say they are trying to. My sheep hear my voice. Hallelujah. For many believers, when we get born again, then for those that are Pentecostals, we move a step further. We get filled with the Holy Ghost. Then you fall under the anointing. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You just turn and then you get born again. And then many people just stop there. So what is it about praying in tongues and just moving? And then they say, just keep praying. There's a real devil in this kingdom. Just keep praying. And the person says, okay, so I'm praying in tongues. And he's just praying. Ba -ba 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 -ba. What is the prayer? To what end? Hallelujah. To what end is our Bible study? To what end is... Let, let me tell you something. If we do not understand our goal and our purpose, our spiritual investments will be a burden. That's why for many people, prayer is a burden. For many people, the study of God's word is a burden because we don't know to what end. It's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do. Hallelujah. Every time you read, you understand there is an exam. That goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to. Are you following me now? When we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king, it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us. Hallelujah. I want you to understand that the king has an agenda. Say after me, the king has an agenda. And what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom? As I announce this, you check your life. If you are not directly supporting this agenda, you are called a rebel. So after this announcement, there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting. Those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king. And you are going to hear it very, very clearly. Are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom? Very simple. The king has an agenda. What is his agenda? The agenda of the king for this season. is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence he said of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement. Promoting the character, the nature, the culture, the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent. Hallelujah. And this first occurs in the hearts of men. Hallelujah. The method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men. That's what we call soul winning. Are you following me now? But that's only step one. To establish the kingdom in the hearts of men. To bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king. By laying down their lives and saying take over my life. And then number two. To begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values, the culture of the king. That's what we are going to be discussing. Kingdom advancement. So what is kingdom advancement? The promoting of God's agenda. The agenda of the king. Every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion. That's what we call purpose. Are you following me now? Your purpose on earth is your role. The part you have to play to promote this universal agenda. Thank you, Jesus. This is the current agenda of the king. That we partner with the governor of the king. Having been taught the values, the culture, the lifestyle. And you see, God, does, God cannot send you. The king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message. Until he schools you. Are you listening to me? You must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life. That's why when God calls a man, he builds that man, then he sends the man. That's what koinonia is all about. Hallelujah. Right now, God is giving us the mindset of his kingdom. 
helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again it tells you we are in the same kingdom. you say no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting it's the nonsense that is going all around god is not teaching us denomination and dogma he's teaching us kingdom are you following me now that the most important thing all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms hallelujah when we understand this we'll stop discriminating ourselves because i wonder what we are going to do in heaven that big table in the last supper there's only one table the bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor because if your seatmate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one Yoruba person one Igbo person and then one northern and quickly quickly three people let's do that quickly quickly Yoruba Igbo please come come up three of you no 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 hallelujah Aaron is from Kaduna State she's from the East and Ejimi is from the what West now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a Yoruba person especially a, a, well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture I follow me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah are you listening to me and then for the Igbos they have I we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of God that we had on Sunday in Pastor Williams house I appreciate them you don't know what I appreciate them hallelujah I ate a very delicious soup called in Salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise God and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in Washington for instance and you're going to the airport and you see somebody just proceed ah, are you a she and then you, say, and then you just greet you know you just bow here and all of that I say, are you a Yoruba? that's nice it connects you are you following me now please I'm trying to communicate a message I hope you understand what I'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a Yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person even if a Yoruba person wears kaftan his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this a Yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many Christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have 
we have many believers across many churches and many Christians but the world is still contending whether Jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing Christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask I say who are you Christian who are you Christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the Bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in Bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a Jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah their dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were Jews God bless you please sit down hallelujah so our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture now the word culture is not a demonic word I know that um, in a Nigerian and African context I know that there are many wrong things with many cultures all right there are very healthy sides of culture respect love for God but there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah but then the kingdom of God has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying Lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say Lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a Yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this 
you just love, lost a loved one. And instead of you to be insulting God and talking, say, Lord, I love you. I love you now. And they cannot understand. I love you tomorrow. I love you forever. You just hear a bad report from the doctor. And instead of panicking, you say, no. There's a light in my soul. In spite of all the darkness that surrounds me. And this light that I see only comes alive every time I hear your voice. And people begin to note your life for behaving strange. They say, that's what they saw in Jesus Christ. The moment Jesus walked, they say, who is this? The way he's teaching, his way of life. They saw him with unbelievers. And instead of castigating them, he was showing them love. They said, what kind of person is this? He began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture. Only comes alive every time I hear your voice. Number two, the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom. Because although we are in the world, we are not of the world. The world, cosmos, we call it the social system. Hallelujah. The social system. Satan being the God of this world. The Bible calls him in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. The prince of the power of the air. The spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. That's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom. Disobedience and rebellion. Hallelujah. In the world system, they hail you for disobeying. Hallelujah. As guys, when you disobey people, Disobey parent, disobey authority. They say, man. And you're like, hey, 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 you just touch your head. Because it's a system. Are you following me now? It's called cosmos. Let me tell you where it started from. It started from a man in the Bible called Cain. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. He came out from under the governing authority of that king. And the Bible says, Cain built a city. A type of a kingdom after the name of his son Enoch and all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system and then Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11 took over and he said let us build a kingdom let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of Babel I'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you Jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because Satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in Luke chapter 4 when Jesus came he began to speak and he said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth he found where it was written in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed. He has smeared me with the Holy Ghost and with power. He has empowered me to do the following. To preach the glad tidings to the poor. To bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free. So the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom. Hallelujah. That's why when you walk up to someone who is sick, someone who has cancer, and you say, I bring you the superior power of the kingdom I represent. These are two kingdoms standing. And you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom. And say, in the name of the king of my kingdom, I'm standing as touching his authority. I command this foreign cancer, go. The cancer going is proof that your king is truly king. That's why miracles, they are called miracles, signs, and wonders. They point somewhere. That's why we hold our miracle services. That's why all of our meetings are power-packed. Many of you who have gone on our Facebook, I'm sure you've, you've seen the great testimony that we have, the latest really that we have right now. Very powerful testimony. Hallelujah. About two or three um, Fridays ago, a woman, not even a believer, hallelujah, came and she stood outside here. 
had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of God or to make a name for the ministry. All this nonsense that people do. That's why a true servant of God will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom. Are you seeing that? So if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you, then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel. And we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves so they have become the jesuses for many people but every true servant of god is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them zeus and hammers the bible says paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people john speaking said that i may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of god any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get god's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 a says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my cities true prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your Bible cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities true prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy Many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor. That's nonsense. Are you listening to me? Hear me. When you understand the agenda of the king, you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor. Hallelujah. For many of us, our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg. The Bible calls such people rich fools. The issue is not the rich. The issue is that the person is a fool. Why a fool? Because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity. The Bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them. There are many people being destroyed by their prosperity. Building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence. He said, woe unto he that puts his strength in a man. Hallelujah. When you want to organize a crusade, We've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications 
Let me tell you something. If you truly love God, you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom. You cannot help the poor by becoming one of them. So it's not the issue of me. I don't like all these carnal things. Carnality, materialism is not having materials. Materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life. When Christ is above anything in your life, it does not destroy you. That's why people are dying, dying in Haiti. The throne of God is still made of gold. He will never reduce it to silver. And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom. It's a tool to advance the kingdom. Let me tell you something. Do you know how many believers have bowed down to Baal because of money? Statistics tells us that about 90% of divorce cases that we have, even in Nigeria today, are directly or indirectly related to finances. Many of our ladies that sleep around for money, do they sleep with us? How much do we have as young people? Is it not those who have money that come and take them? And we have many church people just dancing in the morning, early in the morning, in the morning I will rise and praise the Lord. And Satan, who is the God of that system, when they finish praying, they come out and they don't have food to eat. And Satan stands and says, I will give you all this if you will just bow. And the people say, we preach in church and say, don't bow. And they say, so what do I do? They say, I don't know, but Sha, don't bow. And the man is saying, I must pay the school fees of my children. The Bible says, any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. And we say, don't be corrupt. Don't loot. They say, okay, teach me God's way. We say, forget it. Don't loot. And when the man is under pressure, he will sign that document. When the lady is under pressure, she will sign and say, to hell with anything. And then we keep looking and say, the ladies are corrupt. The young people are poor. The Bible says, the poor, the rich. It didn't say the rich, Christ, the rich will rule over the poor. Are you listening to me? So you better undo this poisonous mindset that Satan has put in believers. As long as we remain in poverty, there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government, preaching lies and prophesying lies, seeking favor. Nonsense. Because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom. For many people, the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the Holy Spirit. And it's what they want that is being done. What are we saying? Hallelujah. And so because I gave a seed of 30 million naira, I come and tell the pastor, there are some people that hate me. Preach on hatred. The pastor says, yes, Lord. And he comes on stage. He said, I was sleeping by 5 a.m. And the Lord told me, son, stand up. I have a word for you. And I had hatred in my spirit. Shout hatred. Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogant. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to Baal and we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food. And you cannot talk against the king. You can't eat the king's food and talk against the king. But we are that remnant, that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system. That's why we are teaching what we are teaching. So prosperity is very important. Number four, it's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected. It's called influence. I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody. I mean clap and shout. Look at them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what is happening to her. She's happy and enjoying it, although she cannot understand. This same character or this same attribute 
is inherent in every one of us including the religious people I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him we all desire influence for parents when they call your child and the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating come on am I talking help me how much more the king that you represent the Bible says the hour has come John 17 verse 1 he said now the hour has come he said glorify thy son that thy son may bring glory to you that's how God gets glory when the sons are glorified glorify now thy son that thy son may bring glory to you are you listening to me to reveal his glory and his majesty is found in Psalms 145 and the Hebrew word used here is called doxazo, a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if Michael Jackson just lift his hand and say I get I'm born again one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibu was having a Thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that Thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love God like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and I or Richard Jaffa preached his life out he said now that I have this caliber of people let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them let me tell you something there are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you is your influence the Bible says see it that way man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before Kings I was watching the Forbes Forbes um, first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95% of all of them are members of Freemason Illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the Bible say for God so love the world that you are hating <laughs> hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of God because of this platform that God has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come I would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world Satan has captured God bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch MTV and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the MTV directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages I think from ages 8 to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset 
The world is a system that gives you a mindset. Are you following me now? So an average child, the moment he grows up, I mean the moment he is born, he is exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset. Let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and Satan is using it and advancing his kingdom. Christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade. But there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade, yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom. Number one, sports. Sports is an area where the power of Babel is being built. Hallelujah. Right now, sport has become a religion. I hope you understand that. There are many people who have made merchandise out of sports. And there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom. Why? Because we have taught people, the moment people begin to sense the anointing, they tell them, Kai, that means one day you stand on the pulpit. Can I surprise you? Hear me. Those you call ministers are those the Bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers. The ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Sports, number two, in the area of arts. Music, fashion. This is an area that the church has neglected. You just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night. And those people have paid their price. They are competent. So, we'll say, so long as they don't mention Satan, I will listen. You know, I like it. You come to church here. It's only in church that you see people sing. No rehearsals. They don't do anything. They just walk. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church. Whenever you hear quality sound, good music, everything, know that it is Satan who is being promoted. And we sit down and watch. And many times we collect offering and say, Lord, let it be for the advancement of your kingdom. What are you saying? The advancement of his kingdom is not theory. Are you getting blessed, please? Because we are going to pray. I'll soon stop here and then it's a series, so we'll continue. Every time you see excellence, you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies Satan. And you will see levels of excellence and competence. They are sound. They are organized. They are excellent. And they directly promote Satan. But how about it? Mediocrity is the most important thing. The voice doesn't matter. It's just a revelation. I say, Ooh. And the keyboardist for 10 minutes is trying to find the key punching. And then he's smiling. You don't provoke yourself. The Bible says, by the truth. As someone say you are called into fashion. Who do you know in fashion? Let me, I don't know anybody. Oh, okay, one person, Versace. These are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them. Those in the world, the sports people, the media people, those at the forefront of music and fashion, day and night they are building themselves. They sign contracts with Satan and they keep investing in themselves. You ask them, where are you going? They keep innovating things. Because they live for the glory of Satan. But we have many believers who cross our legs and we think God will do everything. And you say, I know one day the top is my portion. You really think so? The top is your portion? How? We don't invest in ourselves. We just come and mumble tongues for one hour. And then we say, My destiny. And then you go to a place and they send you out. They say, No job for you and you are angry. Why will I give you a job where you are not competent? Why should I give you a job where you will make my company lose? Are you, are you, am I provoking somebody? Let me tell you. Whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head, there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the Holy Spirit will give you. Believe what I'm saying. I pray in tongues. But we are the Nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword, but with another hand we keep beauty. So many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer 
you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom Many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians. And then we say, hey, it's happening in Nigeria. It's happening. Where the, it wasn't enacted by angels. It was enacted by human beings. You can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a a, a, a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the well do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we're let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street, he had a father and a mother. Correct? We do not realize that according to God's principle and structure, the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with God's life and the kingdom life. Hallelujah. Sorry, let me have one. Sweetheart, come. Let me use you as an example. Come. Appreciate this beautiful lady. <laughs> Wonderful children of Pastor Williams. Come, sweetheart. Quick, 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 quick. hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of hallelujah is that let me tell you 
if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the Lord, don't get married, don't give birth. Are you listening to me? Very important. And that's one area. Satan is perverting the family life like never before. People are losing priorities. And they look at children and when they say, bring this child to church, they look, look and say, ah, ah, little children like this. But these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet. And no one stops them. The parents pass and see the children and say, ah, okay, children, say, with their little thing. Then one day the child tells you, Mommy, I've been the queen of the coast since three years. I'm the queen of the coast. <laughs> queen of what? I thought you were young. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? Let me challenge parents here and prospective parents. The word train up a child does not mean discuss with them. It, makes, it means make them do it. If I'm going to church, my child is going to follow me. No matter what the argument is, we'll talk later hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me back bring me back and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child Hallelujah. Bless this lady. I love you. God bless you, sweetheart. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are many parents that for your children, the first time they hear I love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it. And then he comes and says, hey, how are you? I love you. And <laughs> although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook, she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear. And then she says, I hate you, I hate you. And then in the night, she flashes him. And then he flashes her back. <laughs> then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again, or high. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say I'm sorry when they need to say I'm sorry. That kind of a family is not a true picture. The first example of God should be seen in a father. The first example of the Holy Spirit should be seen in a mother. The first example of unity should be found in the couples. Hallelujah. To train the children in the fear and the admonition of God. I have a dream. That after 20 years of marriage, you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing. No rat race, no fighting up and down. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's what you hear us singing. Because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy, we are adhering to it. Are you getting blessed? I'm provoking something. The last area, media. Right now, you can just log on and browse pornography for free. It has already been paid. Satan paid people to prove that Jesus is not Lord. He is still paying people. Hallelujah. You just open any, a nice Christian site with a little clip. Five minutes, they say pay $50. Then say, I'm not ready. And then somebody say, come and see. I had an encounter with Satan. It's free on YouTube. Watch. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? The media. It's just right now that there's a media revolution. God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mentioned this area, something in your spirit says, are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming, they just bring water for you and say, Daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas, 
are the areas that the church have left to the world and can i tell you something our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems that's why we are holding this teaching hallelujah but i know we are that generation that the next set of sports people i look forward to times when before they start playing while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and and scoring goals they give you an opportunity to talk to six million people and you tell them i speak under the authority of the lord whose i am and who i serve that statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say this is my mentor i'll do anything he's doing and now that he has mentioned jesus what is it about jesus and they begin to search and god will lead them to a site and they will check Jesus is Lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there. And then you read and know. Let me tell you, if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again, in the next 100 years, we will not affect the world. In five minutes, the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the TV. Five minutes, a woman like Oprah Winfrey stands on TV and declares to people that Jesus is not Lord. And in five minutes, I was checking her Facebook and she has six million followers. Six million followers on Facebook. Hallelujah. Coca-Cola has 23 million. And I check many churches, 10, 5, 11, 22, 110. 300, 700. And then a few hundred thousand. Those are the mega ministries. So can you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So after you get born again and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you and then he sends you. And then he begins to call you. He says, oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah. And all kinds of people. And he says, I'm sending you. Wherever there is darkness, God sends you as the light. And he says, go as the light. And he comes and says, Mr. Yums, you draw and you do design. I'm sending you to this industry. He comes and says, Aaron, you are an events planner and you do logistics i'm sending you to that system he says sweetheart i'm sending you to this system this is um, representing the head of department when you say I'm, I'm sending you reveal my creativity i'm sending you and then we come to church and pray in tongues and build ourselves and the gifts of the church help us and bless us and equip us after church we come out that's why i don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week that's nonsense Don't stone me. If for seven days in a week you are in church, all the days of your life, you will never affect the system. Because the mission field is not in the church. The mission field is outside the church. It says you are the light of the world, not the church. So we come and we are built. We are equipped. On Monday, you are at work in the bank. And someone comes. And while you are signing the check, you see by the Spirit. And you say, sir, you've been having a challenge in your family. And he looks. And then you tell him, I bring you the word of the Lord. I know that you're having a financial problem. Begin to tithe and be serious. Tithing is a principle of the kingdom. And then you just turn his receipt and write your number. Or you write a number of a ministry. He can go and say, God bless you. The king has found expression. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you are an architect and people come and give you a difficult project and you sit down and you lock yourself and say Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person Lord I'm an ambassador make way for me and then God makes the way and in the night while you are sleeping the, the Daniel said while I slept the visions of heaven are communicated unto you and you wake up and you come up with something that will cause the government to call you the government will say how did you do it that's what happened to the three hebrew boys that's what happened to daniel the one we call belshazzar he manifested a dimension and in babylon they saw 
and they knew that Christ was the king. It wasn't because he was praying in tongues. It was because he could translate this thing. God sends you into the business world and you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives. And you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people. At that point, your Christianity is meaningful. Hallelujah. And then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house and you just decide and say, this week we are going to cook and call our neighbors, Christians or non-Christians, without discrimination. And you put your beautiful garden because you have received God's prosperity message. And so you, you have killed greed too in your life. And so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire. And you bring the people. Hallelujah. Let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of God. You see the people that come and, and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport. Let me say it to the glory of God. When their leader, it's not a Christian, he was sick. And his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you God gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless God for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called Billy Graham all the presidents in America from his time until Barack Obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many Many have come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Rick Warren, who wrote Purpose Driven Life, had been invited many times to the government house to speak. For many Christians, when we invite, they invite us to the government house, we are just thinking of how we will chop. And someone who is anointed, who loves God, suddenly gets to the government house and he's like, I beg, Jerry, I'm coming. And then you say, Shabakabarata, ba 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 ba. I see that you and we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can I do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster Jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be Joshua Selman International Ministries. We like names and we like titles. We don't think kingdom. Unbelievers think kingdom. Everywhere they go, their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression? He said, when you pray, say this. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. I've made up my mind that everywhere I go, the kingdom will find expression. Ejimi makes shirts. Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. This is an artistry and the creativity of one. He is a minister, but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory. Hallelujah. We believe in it. I'm being practical and I'm sharing this. Dio is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country. Hallelujah. He's going for a training. He's the head of the media. But it's not just about praying in tongues. We realize that we have an agenda. We are going, we are invading the media. And so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks. Certified. Every one of these media people, you see them doing what they are doing, they were trained. 
because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn a, a church is the place of building and any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we're not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you not all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god would give him songs and then he would write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it i look forward to times when when we tune our radio we we'll just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested, it's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there. And we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. 
will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it, but let me tell you, it's in you. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God. We are rising. Our parents, like the Eli generation, have done their best. And they are transferring the button to the Samuels. And we will carry it and represent the kingdom. A time will come, they will come and meet you. And someone will want to bribe you. And you hold back his hand. And not just say, no, I don't do it. You say, no, I represent a kingdom. Don't just say, I don't do it. Someone comes to meet you and says, can you come to my hotel? I say, no, I don't do it. What you are just trying to say is that uh, I don't do it with you. You must let the person know that I represent a kingdom and I'm bounded by a modus operandi. And part of it is that we are not engaged in this. I have a king and I pay an allegiance to him. Hallelujah. Ejimi does designs. When you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-God, he will not do it. Because you like him, you will change your mind. Ha. I look forward to a time when the world, although they don't like us, they cannot deny the impact we are bringing. That's the time. At that time, we will gather on Sundays and pray. And every time we are praying, although they do not understand what we are saying, they cannot deny the effect. It's telling on their salaries. It's telling on the economy. You come and meet someone working in your office. And like Joseph, the person is depressed. And he said, what happened? He said, I was just told I have cancer. And he said, come with me. As the manager of the company said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, cancer, go. And the person is healed. And he said, I thought it's only in church. And he says, to let you know that the kingdom of God is advancing. Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise. Arise. It's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down. The call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility. We are going to pray. We are out of time. We will continue the next time. I will be revealing to us the structure of the kingdom. I really want us to understand the concept of the kingdom. Now you see that it's beyond just getting born again. Rise up on your feet. Habobo, Habobo, your kingdom reigns, your kingdom reigns, Habobo, Habobo. Responsibility to directly promote the government of heaven in your class, in your job. You have a responsibility of the increase of his government and his peace. There shall be no end. 
How much of the king are you representing? How much of his glory are you directly representing? Come on, pray. Pray. So go to of your kingdom, your character, your culture, your lifestyle, your way, in politics, in government, in music, in the media. Family life, Christ must be exalted. Make sure you are praying. We are that generation. It's an apostolic generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Hear me. Hear me. You are going to pray one prayer and say, Lord, I receive grace to be competent. Hear me. Many of us right now from this meeting, go and buy books. Go and buy DVDs that address the area you know God has called you. Sit down and walk. There's room for laziness. Generals are not lazy people. Lift up your voice and pray. I will be competent in the media. I will be competent in politics. Go ahead and pray. It's an apostolic reformation. Inside and outside, make sure you are praying. That's why you came for Koinonia tonight. To be equipped, to be empowered. Come on, pray and say, Lord, you are sending me to the media. I will be competent. You are sending me to politics and government. I will be competent. You are sending me to the family ministry. I will be competent. You are sending me to fashion and style. Make sure you are praying. Whether you are a caterer, whether you are an event planner, whether you are a pastor, whether you are a banker, whether you are a politician, we all have the same mandate, the same responsibility. Whether you are a teacher, whether you are a student, Advance his kingdom. Advance his kingdom. Advance his government. His kingdom, his influence is an everlasting kingdom. Make sure you're praying. Make sure you're praying. In ministry, I receive grace to be competent. In business, I receive grace to be competent. In every area you have called me, I receive grace to be competent for the sake of his majesty, for the sake of the kingdom. My generation will hear my voice. My confidence will give me a voice and I will shout it. Everything. With everything, we will shout for your glory. With your country, with your country. As a lecturer, as a computer mogul, as a business mogul, as an investment tycoon, as a pastor, with everything, we have one agenda, advance the course of his kingdom. Make sure you are singing this song as a prophetic revelation. Confidence in God, 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 
friends, this is what Jesus died for. This is what Jesus died for. We not just win souls, but we advance their kingdom. So when you get people born again, don't leave them there. That's why God prepares Koinonia as a platform to equip people. Changing our minds there's no room for disobedience. There's no room for rebellion. We may be young people, but we are not lawless. We have a king above us. And we are going somewhere that the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our God. That the media of this world will become the media of our God. That the politics of this world will become the politics of our God. Hear me? That's why you came here tonight. And for as many who are connecting on the internet, and many others who will hear this tape, and this, the DVDs, there is a clarion call. It's beyond church. It's beyond ENI. It's beyond koinonia. It's a, an apostolic reformation. God is bringing upon the nations. Listen to me. If it is true, that Satan is the only resistance to you, then I assure you, you are leaving this place after tonight, a changed, a transformed. If it is true that the only enemy of the Christian is Satan and nothing else, then I assure you that nothing will stop the manifestation of the word of God in your life tonight. I am confident of this. If it is true that Satan is the only resistance, transform your life tonight and how many of you came here with expectations in your heart you see one of the most dangerous things to do is to come into God's presence with a sense of familiarity 
Because the Bible says that they worship him in heaven. And while they are recovering from the experience of he who was, they see who, who, he who is. He who was is still carrying a dimension of glory that they have not finished comprehending. And then they see a new level. I tell you something, God will do something in your life tonight. Amen. It will change your life in a dramatic way, in a way that you will be shocked. Your finances, in your health, the power of God is so strong in this place. That's why we are taking our time to worship. You must be patient enough to worship God. He's not your mate. Don't let new creation reality make you think God is your mate. You are one with him. He brought you into that experience. You didn't earn it. And so we are taking our time to worship him because he is great. Holy is the whole Worship the miracle worker. The whole Forget about your sickness. Forget about any challenge. The whole 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 showed me a vision this morning and I saw a woman in a labor room. I just got up, I was praying and I thought God wanted me to pray for a woman who was pregnant. Maybe a woman pregnant somewhere who he wanted to give birth. And I saw a woman, hallelujah, her water had broken, she was ready to give birth. Hallelujah. And then I saw it was as though the woman was, you know, there are medical people, you know that there are certain conditions that must be met for safe delivery. And it looked as if there were other, there were factors that were not yet complete. Hallelujah. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, release the delivery. Ah, yeah. You don't know what God is up to do in your life tonight. He said, for that which I show you in the secret place, declare upon the mountain top. Habakkuk chapter 2 from verse 1 it says I will set myself upon the tower and I will stand and I will watch to see what the Lord will say I tell you God has a word tonight the servants of God came up here telling you the power of God's word tonight you are in for an encounter the Lord has vowed with his name to make sure you don't live the same hallelujah you believe it you believe it we are in seasons when your faith must be alive. When you hear the word of God, you receive it. Forget, let me tell you something. You insult God every time you exalt your situations above God. I don't care what you came here with. Let me tell you something. The psalmist and also Solomon said there is nothing that is new upon the earth. Are you listening to me? You are not the first to have a, a cancer or HIV or to be in need of something, a growth or lumps or whatever it is. Or to have curses in families and all kinds of demonic things. We serve a God who is able. If God cannot solve your problem, then we are, we are finished. Oh, but he is the one above. Can we sing that song? Yes, Lord. How many of you are ready to sing that song? <laughs> Hallelujah. On your hands together. Forget about your challenges. Let joy rise in your spirit.
casually. I made up my mind to live long and to declare the word of God. So if you want to live long and declare the word of God, which is the gift God has given to us, I want you to say, I am alive. I am, alive. I am, wealthy. I am wealthy. All things are possible for me. In Jesus mighty name. Give your neighbor a high five and tell the person, I love you. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. It's a privilege this night before I go on. It, it was a setup between me and my, and my staff here. I came into Zaria today and I told them, men and brethren, what shall we do to Apostle Simon? They said, this is what we're going to do. I'm serious. This evening, we went out somewhere to go and get something. I'm serious, that's my testimony. We went to go and get something for you. <laughs> when we got there, we were taking out the thing. The owner of the place said, I've been looking for you, Mas. I heard you've left Zaria. I've been looking for you to be a blessing to you. And as we were picking your own, they were giving me my own. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isn't God wonderful? So tonight, somebody will say, why is it that he's doing it openly? They say, if you are giving out something with your right hand, your left hand should not know. If you like, let my left hand know. Yeah. What's my business? Who asked my left hand to go and look? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So right now, on behalf of me and my wonderful staff, this is just um, a token to say a very big thank you for being a friend to the industry and um, being a blessing to us. And uh, also, you chose me to be your friend. I didn't choose you. So it's my pleasure. Come and celebrate Jesus as we present this. Amen. Men and brethren, that is not your own. Your own is coming. This evening, I want to say quickly that um, we have been a, God has been a blessing to us. And among the few people who believed in me and my dream is my wonderful pastor, Reverend Joshua Tende, and... Uh, a wonderful one here. Amen. Amen. Early this week, was it this week or last week? This week, I met him in his office. We were just discussing. I told him what the Lord is doing in this talk entertainment industry. This talk entertainment industry is my own God-given assignment. Everybody have their own assignment. Amen. His own is to preach the word and heal people. My own is to make you laugh and you get healed. <laughs> Amen. And I don't take my ministry lightly, no matter what. I take it very serious. And he's the person who has given me the biggest challenge of my life as a comedian. 
not just an, a comedian, international comedian, not just international comedian, a gospel comedian, calling me to MC a crusade. How many of you were massacred that time? That was my biggest, and I was thinking, I asked myself, how will he so believe in me? So, how? Some massacre people, some of them, Hausa, Kaduna people. If you tell them rubbish, some of them came with their problem, I want to make them laugh. Oh God, but I thank God it was a very great time. We had a very great time and experienced a lot of welcoming from ENI itself. The partners, our brethren over there, the pastors. Come and celebrate everybody. <laughs> now, let me say this before I have my seat. He's going to tell us that later. So, this central entertainment industry is just four years. That's the industry God has given to me. It's an entertainment industry. But the assignment God gave to me is that we are going to use entertainment as a platform to preach Jesus Christ in all nations. Amen. So we are coming to bring show for you. You are coming in form of show. But behind the show, you go receive Christ and get you the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's our assignment. So that thing has been happening over the place. And we don't just establish, like I um, placed the testimony on Facebook. We started four years ago, but with four years, we have three offices here in Zaria. We are started four years ago. Now in Abuja and now in Sierra Leone, Freetown. We have our office over there. Amen. And the first event we'll be having in Sierra Leone will be October, second week of October. The whole country is waiting to experience the first show. Amen. And I thank God because their heart is open to receive what God has given to us. But in Zaria, we'll be celebrating the four years anniversary in Zaria by second week of June, which is 10th of June. We decide to bring it on campus so that every one of you will partake of it. So within the time, we'll tell you how everything is going to happen. So we want your heart to be open towards it, to receive the good work. But I want to say a very big thank you for believing in me, believing in what we're doing. And every one of you who has been following us on Facebook, on everything, and not on Twitter, we'll enter there soon. Some of you tweet. I don't start tweeting. When I start tweeting, I put sweet there so that I, you know, when you tweet, you get something to leak. <laughs> now, let me advise you, if you don't know a thing, find out the rudiment of that thing. Before you enter trouble. The reason why I left choir. <laughs> why are you singing? Why are choir member here? How many of you sing here? Before if I sing, come and see where people are crying. I think they will be crying. But don't ask them why they are crying. <laughs> but the result you get, you will not like it. So I was, I was in a program one time. Our pastor told us, we are going to have overcomers convention in a week's time. Me, I traveled. The only thing I did was to call the choir master. What is our uniform? They say red and black. It not give me the further anything. But there was a song with the heart before then. When time came, I came into town. A day to the program. I didn't even ask the song. I still joined them. That day I wore my black and red. I sat in choir seat. Not knowing that the pastor have already told them that the first day it is not the whole choir that will sing. It's only six people that will sing. They selected the six people that did their rehearsals. Then I say, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together as you make welcome the overcomers choir. You see, people stand up. I joined them, stand up. <laughs> I don't know. I thought others have stood up. Bro. Nobody else. So. They did like this. We climbed the stage. Now, I said, this stage, I don't see the many. I whisper to the choir master. I said, guy, where are the rest? He said, pastor said, no, this is. <laughs> I don't know this. So he said, no, go out. Stay here. You know, one good thing about choir, if there are many, if you don't know the song, you still cover up. Yeah. When others are singing, you better do like this. <laughs> and the only time they will catch you that you don't know the song, when you overdo your own. <laughs> That's when they know you don't know. But while we are standing, there are six of us. My brother. If others go there, another time I will go here because what did I want to sing? Not to jam them. I don't jump in the tears that come up with my eyes because I don't know. I don't think I go sing. The next night, I enter spirit, begin to pray. I pray till the program finish. Now, thank you very much, Apostle. I'm learning from you. Your suit, you could see the anointing of God flowing. Amen. The reason why, the reason why I stopped wearing suit was the first wedding they asked me to, not to MCO, to do best man. They gave us the material to sew. I gave my tailor, gave him my measurement. My tailor said, Mas, I, I said, I perceive my spirit, he said, it increase. I said, no, perceive anything. So what can I give you? 
Tell her, go so what in the old spirit. I don't come back on Friday, take my clothes. Now on Saturday morning, around 7 a.m. I go take my suit while I give them. When I got the thing up, not be suit again, I see now be shit. My brother, that is not my problem. My problem is not the best seat. Now I wear my shirt up out there, then you my ear. I wear clothes, my shirt up out there, my ear. I begin to ask the guy, why you do me this thing? He said, as a manager, you go work. I don't wear suit, they wear the, me and my friend, they might enter. I said, they enter. I said, God, you don't have to help me. Two of us, they might enter. Shut up, I do near my ear. Begin to come and move aside. I said, take come over here, I love my guy. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4 says that he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto men. I can't imagine myself making people laugh like this. That would be frustration. Mazi, you have this anointing. Appreciate him, please. Celebrate him. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's get to the business of tonight. Lord, we give you praise. Matthew chapter 12. The Lord will heal, deliver, empower. Hallelujah. Matthew 12. I want to share with you something very briefly. And then we pray. Hallelujah. I need you to follow me very carefully because the understanding of what I'm about to teach will open up your spirit to release and to receive miracles. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. With my mouth shall I make it known from the rising of the sun right on till it's going down. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the wisdom of the Lord. Verse 43. Matthew 12, verse 43. Hallelujah. How can you walk when you don't know the way of the way? Allow me to sing it to you. Don't sing. How can uh, is a question I'm asking you. You think I'm singing? We're about to read a very serious scripture. I'm only converting my question in a song. How can you walk? When you don't know the way of the wind How can you run When you don't know the way of the spirit How can you fly Like the eagle When you don't know the wind It's power at work in you It's changing everything In obedience to Christ 43 there, Matthew 12, verse 43. If you don't have a Bible, make sure you are sharing with someone. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. And then he said, I will return. Into my house from which I came out. This is the spirit speaking now. And when he is come, he finds a serious situation. He finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Please follow me, Christians. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And the last state of that man, who is speaking here? Not an angel. Not a prophet, not a high priest. The Christ himself is speaking. He's showing us a mystery. The words of Jesus are a window into the realm of the spirit. 
they guide you to understand the operation of spiritual things. Hallelujah. Jesus is speaking here and he's saying that when a spirit is casted out of a man, he said that that spirit will go searching for dry places and not finding anyone, the spirit will advise himself and say, let me go back to that man. Hallelujah. And he says, you will come to that man and find him so the Bible likens a man to a house. Hallelujah. It says that he will find it swept. Question, who swept it? Somebody must have swept it. Are you following me? Clean. Who cleaned it? Garnished. But empty. And when the spirit sees that, listen, to the wickedness of Satan, it would have been enough for the spirit to say, thank you, I will say. He said, no way. He goes back and becomes the least of the seven other demons he's bringing. Are you following me now? The Bible says he goes and gets seven other spirits. More wicked than itself, making eight the number of new beginning. And they start a new circle of destruction. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, that the end of that man. Have you seen believers who experience the power of God, the miracle of God, the deliverance of God, and temporarily seem to have some solutions and they are happy, all to find out that they become worse than they started? Families. Hallelujah. I want to share with you something the Lord shared with me. I didn't even read it in the Bible. It was when the Spirit of God shared it with me. I searched out and I found out it was true. Hallelujah. Now, the ministers of God began to talk about the ministry of the word. And I need to help us understand something even as we pray. That when the word of God, listen, when a man is not born again, the spiritual implication of that is this. Please, can I have someone? Come, sir. When a man is not born again, I hope you realize that man is a tripartite being. Say after me, man is a tripartite being. Spirit, soul, and body. You are a spirit. You have a soul and you live in what? A body. The body hosts the spirit. The soul is the realm of the personality of the man. His will, his emotion, his intellect. Hallelujah. The soul is the connection of the spirit of that man to his body. It is through the means of the soul that he is able to relate both to the realm of the spirit and to this realm. Are you following me now? Now, when a man is not born again, listen to me. When a man is not born again, spiritual death is not cessation from breathing. I hope you know that. Spiritual death is the absence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a man. The Holy Spirit is what we call eternal life. I've said this again and again. Eternal life is not one box that the Holy Spirit brings and drops in you. The presence of the Spirit of God is eternal life. Moses was standing upon a place and fire was burning a bush and it was dirty. And because of the presence of God, he said, remove your shoe for where thou standest has suddenly become holy. Not because anybody swept the ground. Are you listening to me? And so it's important to realize that the spirit of man outside of Christ, I hope you know that Satan and demons are spirits. Hallelujah. Do you agree with me? Praise God. Now, they have the opportunity. There are three levels. Please listen. There are three levels of the manifestation of Satan in the lives of people. Number one is the willful permission. Is what we know to be what people call witchcraft and all of this. Where someone opens up his spirit willingly by any act of initiation, whether culture and all of these things. Are you understanding me? So all the people in our village that know, they know all the music artists that sell their soul to Satan. Are you following me now? They are not trying to, it's not a mistake. They did it consciously. They did it willingly. The way you gave your heart to the Lord, did you do it consciously? You said, Lord, I open up myself. Is that correct? That's how other people have come up to the altar. It's amazing that all, all of them are all done in the altar. Hallelujah. And they opened up their spirit for the manifestation and the manipulation of Satan. At that point, Satan takes complete control of their will. Are you listening to me? Their emotions and their intellect. 
and they only live as puppets carrying out the activity of Satan. Day and night there is a communication between them and the realm of the spirit. That happens to one who is not born again. Are you listening to me? Now, when you get born again, something happens. The Bible tells us that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness where Satan and his rule and his reign is into what? The kingdom of light, the kingdom of God's dear son. Are you following me now? And now what that happens is that by the act of new birth, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, something dramatic happens. The Bible makes us to understand that on account of of the finished work of Jesus Christ. Are you listening to me? On account of the finished work of Christ, the Bible makes us to understand that your spirit becomes regenerated. Are you listening to me? Your spirit. What does that mean? There is a cutting off with Satan and everything as far as your spirit is concerned. Are you following me now? Now here is the error in the body of Christ. And I want you to listen and listen again. I speak this not in an attempt to make a boast or anything. But let me tell you something. I have been caught up in the realm of the spirit many times. And so the things that I tell you, they are not just things I read in the Bible. There is a difference between what you have read and what you have experienced. Are you listening to me? Now, do you realize that a believer can no longer be possessed with a demon? Are you listening to me? Because light and darkness cannot dwell in the same place as far as your spirit is concerned. But what we do not realize is that your soul is another faculty on its own. Composed of your will, your intellect, your mind. And your mind is a store of thoughts. The realm of your soul. Are you listening to me? And one thing we do not understand is that the Bible says in 1 Peter, I believe, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. What is the Bible saying? It said, there is a remaining part of salvation that has not yet happened to you. It said, it's called the end of your faith, the completeness. It says, the salvation of your soul. What is the salvation of the soul? It's what we generally know to be called the renewing of the mind. But it's, it's not, not only that. I need you to understand. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. But mighty through God. To the pulling down of, and it gives us a strange name. It calls something strongholds. He said, casting down every imagination comes from the Greek word Yezah. And every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Then he says, bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Question. Was Paul speaking to unbelievers? Are you listening to me? Another issue. Paul looks at the Galatian church and says, oh foolish Galatians. He said, who has bewitched you? Why will Paul use that kind of word for Christians? He says, all foolish Galatians, why have you allowed Satan access to the realm of your soul? Are you listening to me? And this is where a lot of people miss it. While it is true that in Christ, the Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and ordinances that spoke against us, he nailed it to the cross. Hallelujah. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. But what we do not realize, Christians, is that like people, uh, Kenyon, E.W. Kenyon will say, there is a legal side of redemption and there is a vital side of redemption. The legal side of redemption is reality as seen from the perspective of the Father. Are you listening to me? The vital side is you establishing that reality so that it becomes in the earth and in your life as it is in the heavens. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. It never said it's settled in the earth. It takes the faith and the operation of the Son of God to cause the word to be settled in the earth and in your life. And now what people do not understand, and hear me friends, I bless God for all of the teachings and the buildings and the equippings, but the army of God that must rise, we must have knowledge of how to stand upon our victory. So when you get born again, 
Are you listening to me? Satan no longer has access to your spirit. But the trouble is this. If you were only using your spirit, then you would have been perfect. But now your soul is still there. The faculties of your mind, your will, your intellect. Are you listening to me? The pornography you watch, you still remember. Are you listening to me? The, although you are born again, the bottle of beer that you took, the taste of it is still in you. Come on, are you listening to me? Don't look at me as if I'm a Christian. Hallelujah. That sense of wickedness and bitterness is, is there. And the trouble is this. The word of God. Now, this I'm explaining to you the ministry of the word. To the believer, hear me. I'm going to be redefining concepts. I need, if this is all I do tonight, it is very important. Because we need men and women who are knowledgeable. Are you listening to me? For me, I, I don't see it as pride in ministry. When people are always running, coming. Man of God, pray for me. There is a demon in our family. There is this and that. There is this. And this is why we are taking our time to teach. It is our goal that every one of us becomes strong and fortified. So that we can now go back to our homes and our ministries and our territories. And begin to legislate out of knowledge and understanding. Any ministry that makes the people totally dependent on the man of God. Such that when he's not around, they cannot do anything. There is a name for it. The Bible calls it witchcraft and manipulation. I don't care which ministry. Are you listening to me? Jesus was with 12 people for three and a half years. And he was confident to know there were still some other things that he had not completed in his course curriculum. Even when he resurrected, he still stayed with them. And he finished everything. He said, I am confident. There are many things I can tell you, but you cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall take up the things that are mine and shall give it unto you. And he left them and the people did not fail. A true apostolic generation is that generation where everyone stands tall. Everyone is equipped with the knowledge of the things of the spirit. It's not enough. It is not our pride to just record testimonies of cancers and all of these things. It is our pride to know that the next miracle service will just arrange 5 or 15 people. And we are just worshipping while the remaining people are healing and raising crutches and moving with people. This is proof that we are moving forward. So for those of you in ministry, there is need for us to redefine our paradigm. When you become the man of God doing everything alone, and when without you the system cripples, you are an idol. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? And so we must train a church that is full of understanding. Not men and women who are gullible. Many believers do not have interest in the word of God. We only have interest for results and power and solution. That's why we like prophets. Don't waste my time teaching me the word of God. Just tell me, will this business work or not? And if no, what is the solution? Can I sow my way into changing your prophecy? Balaam, speak to me and let me go. But that's the kind of generation... That the spirit of error will sweep and will be crippled under the trap of Satan. But the Lord is raising a generation of men and women who are empowered by the spirit. That not only will you receive healings and will you be empowered. But you will be equipped in grace and faith. One day Peter and John, after Jesus had left, they were just discussing, wondering what they were going to do with their lives. And suddenly... The Bible makes us to understand that they saw a man at the gate beautiful. They said, now the master has trained us and he gave us a name. He gave us an authority. And they looked at him. They said, today is this day, Mr. Man. Now it's time. See, our greatest joy in this place is to see everyone reproducing the things that you see in our lives. Are you listening to me? To see that everyone is walking in grace and power. There's nothing wrong when you come to receive miracles. That's why we are always there. Because sometimes when you are learning and growing in the things of the spirit, after you stretch and your hand cannot reach, that's why God puts us there. We hold your hands and say we were once there. We understand. There's nothing to be ashamed of. That you prayed and prayed and prayed and the sickness didn't go and you had to run to chemists. You run to us and we say, Mr. Man, go to the chemist and get a drink. 
when you are well, you can keep searching. A day will come, you will build fortification. There's nothing to be afraid of. This is a school. God is training an army. But our greatest pride is not to sit down and see a queue of hundreds of people waiting for counseling. And you ask the person, what is the issue? And the person tells you something cried in my room. Ha ha. The reason why many men of God have not taken up the challenge to build God's people is because they are benefiting from the weaknesses of their members. Let me tell you what it does for them. Number one, it does not put pressure on them to keep building upon the word. Because when you have men and women who are gullible, you know, in this place, if you stand upon this altar, you must be prepared. Because then, while you are standing there, there are people with prophetic radar scanning you. When you are standing upon this altar, you must confess your sins, do everything you need to do before you stand. This is not the kind of altar that you just stand and shout. No, 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 no. Somebody might be sitting but standing from a mountain. God has been equipping us. He will watch you make your pride and do your error. I thank God. You see, let me tell you something. This altar here is not all you see. It's high. If you stand here, you will know. You will shake up and down in the spirit until every flesh shakes out of you. Because when you look at the sensitivity and the perception of those listening to you, you know that you cannot teach them error. And they nod their head gullibly. No, sir. And this is what we are achieving. We are not raising arrogant people. We are only raising men and women of understanding. So that when you go somewhere, somewhere, and everybody say, run. And everybody come and lick the man of God's leg. And see everybody going like a dog. Gullible generation. No knowledge and understanding. And even when it is truly God that has said that, you will have a confirmation in your spirit that although this is a, a stupid experience, but then God is in it. Are you listening to me? And so I want to teach us the ministry of the word. Because on one side, we have believers saying once you are born again, that's all. There's no business with Satan. You are refined. You are in Christ. Satan, you are seated up. Satan does not have a place in your life. But the people are dying. They are still seeing causes follow them. We, we can pretend it and paint ourselves and speak in tongues in church and jump up and down. Your brother didn't get a job. You didn't get a job. Your sister didn't get a job. What do we call that? You may not want to call it the name, but what is it called? Are you listening to me? And you are born again. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You are not married. Your brother is not married. You have refused to say in the name of Jesus, nothing is wrong with my life. But you are seeing the same thing. There is a, a thin line between stupidity and faith. The difference is knowledge, understanding, and light. Are you listening to me? And then on one side, here we have people always talking about Satan. Always talking about deliverance. Always talking about the strength of Satan. Talking about everything. Level this, this, this. Level 777. And they say, I met one demon. Do you know how strong Satan is? And you see us come. I mean, we just imagine it. And people put graphic images in their churches with Satan having the horn. And when they talk, you are even shaking in the church. They finish teaching you about Satan and all of these things. And we have believers who are always thinking about Satan. So where is the balance? Because in both faces, we see the power of God. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floor of heaven. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. The moment you get born again, is your spirit man listen to me. This is why it, there are certain people that, because of the impact of the experience, of their new birth. They get born again. They fall under the anointing. They get filled with the Holy Spirit. They begin to pray in tongues. And even lay hands on people and they are healed. Are you listening to me? And then what happens? The men of God who do not have discernment just look. And they call the person and say you will go and be a head of our ministry somewhere. And you do not realize that this is a babe by every standard. The gift of the Spirit is not equivalent to spiritual maturity. It takes a walking with the Spirit. It takes an activity of the word of God and this is what we are teaching. Tonight is miracle service. The miracle is happening to you. No, no, no. The first miracle is not your, your body is children's bread. We are coming to that. Are you listening to me?
Now, but let me explain to you that concept of deliverance. Because our concept of deliverance that we have in our generation is very sad, very sorrowful, very disheartening. Hallelujah. Where believers go every day, every week, every month, every year, I need you to understand that there is something I will show you. And you will see it from the word of God. It is never God's desire, listen to me, that a, be a believer keep being delivered, delivered, delivered. Then is it true that the authority of Christ is above Satan? Are you listening to me? However, you will need it all the time until you listen to the remaining part of my teaching. Are you listening to me? The Bible says, the word of God begins to bring deliverance. What is deliverance? Deliverance means you are separated from things. You are separated from mindsets. Are you listening to me? You are separated from strongholds. Be deliverance is not all about falling and manifesting and foaming in your mouth. There is an instant when we begin to pray now. For some, some of you are sitting down quietly just minding your business. When we begin to pray, some of you don't know when you are out here rolling on the floor. You see, you don't even know what is wrong with you. But you are born again and you are tongue talking. The word of God does what we know to be deliverance. It separates you. It builds you. Are you listening to me? It begins to break your mind from the ordinances of the past and the things that give Satan access to your life. Jesus speaking says, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. That means for as long as Satan finds some things that belong to him, he has legal access to your life. Are you listening to me? Jesus said, the condition for me to defeat Satan and death is that he does not have anything. For a kingdom that is divided against itself shall not stand. And so while you are born again, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are walking in life and power, your mind is not renewed. That's why one day you see somebody who loves God. A pastor, after preaching and doing everything, he just runs to his room. After praying, he turns, he spends three hours watching pornography. And even him, he doesn't know what is wrong with him. And he's embarrassed to admit that there is something torturing his spiritual life. It's easy to come out and wear suit and just stand and speak. But we all have the things that lack of knowledge has brought into our life. That humility, that's why the Bible says you must receive the word of God with meekness. Because sometimes it will need to redefine your philosophy and break you out. Bible says strong meat belongs to them who by reason of use have attained unto full age and have exercised their spiritual senses in order to discern between good and evil. We have a very weak generation of Christians. This is why Satan can ride through churches. Men will be sitting down. Demons will come and hold mics and preach and heal and deliver and do everything and there is no discernment whatsoever. Are you listening to me tonight? So the first ministry of the word in your life is deliverance. This is the reason why, hear me, you break away from all the access points that Satan has in your life. There are two ways that Satan can have access to a man's life. Number one, what we know to be covenants. Number two, ignorance. That's where we have things like um, inheritance, family curses, and all of these things. Now, I need you to know that these things are not fake. Are you listening to me? If there is something called generational blessings, there must be something called generational curses. The only challenge is we stretch it beyond its limits and we begin to speak and make it look like everybody, everywhere, I don't have any generational curse following me. Although there is, because I've seen it in the life of others. Are you listening to me? The word of God separates you. So by the build up of the word, what happens? All of the demons and the strongholds that are gaining grounds in your life, whether by direct encounter with the power of God, such as a miracle service like this, are you listening to me? Or the intake of God's word. All of these demons and strongholds, listen to me, that have stayed in your, that have gained access to you, Whenever they leave, this is where many believers miss it out. The Bible says that demon leaves and he goes round and comes back and does what? Finds the place swept, clean. And the Bible says you are only clean through the word. So that means there is an operation of the word that made that man that clean. 
But what we do not realize is there are two faces to the word. One is as a weapon of deliverance. He sent forth his word and his word healed them. The sent word heals and delivers. But when the word of God is taught, it edifies. What is edification? It builds up spiritual fortification. Are you listening to me? So that now you are not only clean through the word, you are empowered. And according to Colossians chapter 3 verse 16, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all richness. So that whenever Satan comes, he will not find access in your life again. There are many believers who go for deliverance, fall under the anointing, roll up and down, foam in their mouth and get up. And they say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. And the demons come back again and they still see themselves worse, walking in the things. And they say, ah, I was healed. I'm sure I was healed. I was healed. I mean, I know. But now I'm seeing the sickness returning again. Of course. Because there is a fortification. Are you listening to me? It's not enough. That's why we take three weeks in a month to teach the word. Are you listening to me? And then at miracle services like this, we allow the power of God to set free, to heal, to deliver. Let me tell you something. If all we will do in koinonia is receive, prophesy, we will have a generation. You will receive results because it's the sent word. But the sent word only heals and delivers. The sent word does not equip and build. The sent word is sent on a mission. It, it accomplishes what it was sent to do. And there is the word that is sent to accomplish and return back. There is the word that is sent to stay with you. If my word dwell, if, if you dwell in me and my words dwell, not go and return. There is an operation of the word of God that is meant to stay with you. So that as you are full of the word, you become like Christ in power and authority and grace. And there is a spiritual fortification. And at that point you can speak. That day though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. At that point you become full of the word. And you don't need to fear all these devils and witches and wizards again. And so it's not enough for deliverance to come. It's not enough for you to be healed. It's not enough for you to be free. It's not enough for you to say, okay, there are curses and things that come from families and God is breaking you free. It's not enough to say, I'm born again. You must invest in the word. That's why it's important to find your... Let me tell you something. And I say it with every sense of seriousness. If you find yourself in ministry where all you receive is prophecy, 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 you are not going to grow. Are you listening to me? You will receive results. Dramatic and fearful results. But you will never grow into spiritual things. The word must be taught. To send it means to declare it as it is. The word performs its operation. But when it is taught, we teach you the principles of the kingdom. That empower you and equip you to stand. Hallelujah. The teaching ministry is the hope of preparing the army of God. Without a teaching ministry, we are finished. What is another name for your lecturer? What does he do? He spends four years expounding, teaching you principles. That's the reason why you can have a university 30, 40 years. And every time you graduate a student, say from engineering, you have certain expectations because he has been taught. These are principles. Church of the Most High, I need us to arise and realize that without the word of God seated in our spirits, we will keep going back. Satan will come out and you keep coming in. That's what is happening to many of our families. We have, I'm not against them, you can have them, but without this understanding, you will only frustrate yourself. We have monthly deliverances, weekly deliverances, all kinds of deliverances, and the truth is most of the people are not interested in growth. They are just interested in results. And since they told them that is this witch or that wizard that is stopping them, every time we go to meet a prophet, we just want instant solution. That's why many people are not interested in teaching ministries. It takes an unusual grace of God to keep a crowd to listen to the word. Because when crowds come, they come out of their lust and selfishness. 
Not many people are interested in growth and for the power of God to touch them. You want a man of God that just comes up and says, everybody stand up. And they say, lift your right hand. Bring a, a white handkerchief, a red one. If there is not, we have it here for sale. Are you listening to me? And by the time, we like, we like instructions. Not because we love God. We want quick things. We, we like by cutting processes. So all of you who want husbands, quickly run, come and drop 1,000 naira, and then I will pray for you. You can drop the money and fall under the anointing and roll and go back to your seat. You will never get consistent results. So we have programmed ourselves to depend day and night. And we have a lot of men of God who look and they call you. They call some of our fathers. Bring 30,000 and say, no, they say, I will shut the heavens over you and your business. And the man is running. He said, hey, 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 the prophet said he will shut the heavens. Find 30,000, even if you don't have, give me. Tell somebody, grow up. That's why we are criticized day and night. Because our job is to open the body to the truth of God's word unadulterated. And the dangerous thing is it puts pressure on all of us men of God. Because the moment your members begin to have life, you as the man of God cannot sit down again. It will put pressure on you to keep pressing. And this is what many men of God do not want. We don't want anyone to challenge you. The moment you stand and you are looking and you say, I see a river. 50 people are also seeing that river. So you can't lie. You can't just say, I see a river. Ah, the people have been trained. Their eyes are open. They are only sitting quietly, but they are seeing. You tell lies. Somebody walks up to you and says, sorry, yo, not to offend you. But was that, is it not a crown? I saw it too. That means your prayer life has to be alive. That means your word life has to be alive. That means the day you rise up from the bed of fornication and come up, there will be discernment. It puts pressure on you to walk in truth. And this is what many people do not want. But God is raising an apostolic generation that will not only receive miracles, but will be empowered. Not to be arrogant and condemn people. Are you listening to me? But to be fortified spiritually that will command results. That's the reason why our meetings are not just to heal, to deliver, but it's an impartation. Are you listening to me? And that's what some of you are going to receive tonight. Impartation. As I'm speaking to you right now, many of you are receiving impartation. It doesn't take more than one minute for you to be healed. Are you listening to me? It does. The word of God is not so slow. But the word of God is what you must receive in your spirit. And then you are strong. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this tonight? And so there are many of you that although you are born again, you will realize that Satan has gotten access to your life and access to your family. And tonight we are going to take authority all over all of those demonic manifestations. Are you listening to me? That everything that has delayed you by the power of the word of God, we will push you forward prophetically. Hallelujah that you will be fortified with the word of God that you will go and now be the miracle worker you will release the miracle in your homes are you listening to me that many of you tonight will encounter an anointing that will cause you to so prosper and you will begin to make others prosper by reason of that anointing that many of you will encounter an ability of the spirit discernment you stand in your house and the Lord begins to show you things this is what we want and for all of you who came here with every kind of sickness, I want you to know that there is a devil behind it and that devil is going to leave you. Are you listening to me? Looked at the woman and said, woman, thou art loose. From what? What did he see? He said, thou art loose from thy infirmity. There is a wicked spirit called the spirit of infirmity. And the light and the power of God's word comes to bring you miracles. How many of you desire to walk in greater levels of his anointing? because there will be an impartation in this place. In one minute, I'd like you to rise up on your feet and pray. Pray and say, Lord, give me a miracle. My heart is open. All of you who are sick, now is the time for faith to be released in your spirit. Within the next few minutes that we have, 
I like you to release your faith because the power of God is here. Rapata kapara da rabosa, lenda bati ketea, rate bazi kelebosh. We hail you, Most High. We hail you, Most High. Lift your hands, everybody. We hail. I want to cast out devils and break men free from the oppression of Satan. The power of God is so strong in this place. And inside and outside. Ushers, please, I want you to help. Hallelujah. As I begin to speak, the power of God will come like a mighty rushing wind. And it will blow. Ushers, let me help those people. In the name of Jesus. I command the power of Satan broken over lives, over families. Lift your hands, everybody. In the name of Jesus, every divination and stronghold of Satan, I break you free right now. Every manifestation of Satan, go, 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 go. I release the power of God right now. Upon the congregation, inside and outside, Rekete Tebosia, Rekoto Prekerebosa, I cast out devils in the name of Jesus. Parekoto Prekerebos, I see the power of God like a mighty rushing wind. Lift your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to shout the name Jesus just once. My God. I see a sword rolling in the spirit. Parateka pateka topasia. As we shout that name, the power of God will fall and set men free. All shall be ready. Are you ready? Lift your hands, everybody. I like you to shout, Jesus. Jesus. Bring them out. Fire. Fire. The fire of the spirit. That fire upon you. That devil is a liar. Inside and outside, the fire of the spirit. Also, to make it, 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 make Go, 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 go. Wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name that at the mention of the name of Jesus. Bring this lady. That devil, you know my voice. Out of her right now. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Please bring this lady. The power of God is still falling inside and outside. Satan, leave this lady now. Come out of her. 
come out of her now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please bring this lady. You will not find a place even in her family. Therefore, Satan, go. Go. Come out of her. Right now in the name of Jesus. This is not all. Please lift your hands again. The Lord still tells me there's more. One more time. We are going to shout the name. That name that is above every other name. And as you shout, now I see angels. I see angels. Now I see angels. Come on, shout Jesus. 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 Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out. for you as I pray the fire of the Holy Spirit will set you free in the name of Jesus whose I am and who I serve every devil here right now go come out of them come out come out come out come out I set you free by the authority I break you free from covenants I break you free hallelujah please bring that lady Oh, no, you cannot stand the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hold on. Satan, your reign ends. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Your reign ends. Leave I alone. Let her go. You are free. You are free. You are free. Hallelujah. Now look at me. The Lord is showing me the vision of someone in this place. I don't know why God is flowing like this, but please let's just follow him. Time is, well, we have to really hurry up. I'm seeing a substance on your hand. Whether it was given to you by your mother or someone in your family. 
and you use it for protection. Who is that? It was given to you. Please come out. Tonight, God is setting men free. Please come out. There is such a person in this place. Please make sure you are listening inside and outside. Who is that person? Please come out quickly. Except if it's one of these people lying down under the anointing. There is such a person like that. Hallelujah. Please, as soon as you identify that person, let the person come out. Now, I want to minister healing. The healing power of God is here. I sense the healing power of God. Now, because of our time, we may not call out cases individually. Hallelujah. We'll just begin to release the life and the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Madam, I was, Dampa, this is the woman, right? Please come. What is the problem? Mike, please. Yes, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been having pain in my my spinal cord. So I cannot walk well. You cannot walk well. I can't bend down. I can't lift anything. What led to it? It was just pain that started. Just pains. Yes. You believe God will set you free? Yes. That's why you came tonight. Yes. You have faith yes. that the Son of God yes. will set you free. Yes, yes He will. Amen. He will. Amen. What is this on your neck? Uh, they gave me some shika. They gave you some yes. shika Amen. to aid you. Yes. You believe God is going to set you free? Yes. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. The spirit of in. I bring life to your body. I bring life to your back. Right now, the power of God flows through your body. In the name of the Lord Jesus, the power of God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Madam, the power of God is on Walk as fast as you can. Run. Come on. Run. Run. Run.
things before? No. Would you do all of these things before? Um, Absolutely. You couldn't do them. Come on, celebrate a miracle, please. <laughs> command every growth, every tumor, every cancer. As I begin to speak, check yourself. If you find out you are healed, run out here right now. In the name of Jesus, cancer, go, go, growth, go. In the name of Jesus, begin to check yourself. Do what you couldn't do before. I command blindness. Blindness, go in the name of Jesus. Deafness, go. As I begin to pray, check yourself. Whatever is wrong with you, there are some ladies with menstrual issues. I command, let your flow resume now in the name of Jesus. Migraine has just been healed. Please check yourself. As soon as you are healed, run out. We don't have all the time. Migraine, be healed. Now, check yourself, check yourself, check yourself. God is giving miracles. Peptic ulcer, peptic ulcer. Right now, I release the power of God. I command healing for peptic ulcer. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Check yourself. Go ahead and check yourself. Hallelujah. Now, there is a lady with breathing problems. You came here with breathing problems. You can't breathe well. Who are you? It's time for your miracle. Breathing problems. I hope those outside are hearing. Can they hear? Breathing problems. Who is that? Breathing problem. Sometimes you have to gasp for breath. Please quickly, let's save time. Hallelujah. Now, everyone who is in need of any kind of miracle, any kind that you came here with, there's no time to mention all of them. You're going to shout, I receive. That's what the Lord tells me. Three times. The third time, celebrate God and begin to do what you couldn't do. If you find yourself healed, I'd like you to come. Maybe we can take one or two testimonies. Are you ready to shout, I receive? It's an act of faith. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and shout. Receive it. Receive it. I release miracles. I release miracles. Come out of heart. In the name of Jesus, just lay your hands on your chest. Lay your hands on your chest. I command that devil, breathe in and out. Breathe in as hard as you can. As hard you are healed right now. Breathe in. Breathe in as hard as you can. Hold on. Hold on. Now check yourself. What couldn't you do before? Okay. I find it very difficult to breathe. How about now? Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any issue? No. Are you serious? Yes, Bring sir. in and out. Do what you couldn't do. Okay, let's try to jump small. Because when you jump, you any issue, yes, you are healed right now. Yes, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's someone I'm seeing one side of your ear you feel like water you don't hear very well with it who is the person one side of your ear quickly run which of the ears which of the ears lay your hands on the one that is good this is the one that is good you don't hear well with this one okay thou devil of deafness i hope you want somebody to hold this child for you please can ushers that's why we need lady ushers if you are here you are not part of the ocean team 
Sorry, boy, your mother will get back to you right now. In the name of Jesus, I command that devil of deafness, I command your ears, be opened now in the name of Jesus. Now cover this. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Perfection, the ear has opened, she couldn't hear with this ear, stand up madam. Which ear couldn't you hear with? Yes, Are you hearing right now? Very well. Close it. Are you hearing? Tell us your testimony. Very well, sir. Okay. Close your ear. Before I couldn't hear with this ear. Go ahead, talk. Let I her talk. I cannot hear with this ear. Okay. When there's any phone call, I will have to put it on uh, loud voice before I will answer the call because of the pains of this, this, this side. Sometimes the right eye of my right side will be bringing out bringing water. water. Yes, I see it. The but now that devil that has gone. But now I'm free. I don't hear any pain. I think we should dance a little. Are you ready? Just, just transpose and let's... Miracles are still happening. Worship, help me. I don't have an idea. Just celebrate miracles. Hearing the name Rekia, 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 that's the name that I hear. Rekia, please come quickly. Rekia, <laughs> the Lord says I should prophesy a restoration for Rekia. That's what the Lord says I should tell you. This is the scripture the Lord gives me. He said, For many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, But the Lord delivered him from them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. And Janfa is going to pray for you. I feel led that he should just pray and lay his hands and prophesy, call forth. The thing about the prophetic, it, it creates to call forth a restoration. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we demand a restoration Come for on, our this your hour. Faith, release your hands. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the years that the enemy has stolen from you is restored now. In the name of Jesus, we uproot the planting of the enemy out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. Out of your stomach. In the name of Jesus. Even to your marriage, the Lord brings a restoration. The Lord wipes your tears in the name of Jesus. Go forth. God said he's healing you right now. He's healing you right now. 
is healing you of high blood pressure. He's taking that growth out of your stomach. In the name of Jesus, you are delivered this hour. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are here. You cannot turn your hand completely like this. It's been a pain for a long time. And you prayed. You came to this meeting and you said, God, you must visit me. You are a woman. I'm seeing you tie something on your head. You tie something on your head. Who is that? Come, please run. Which of the hands? This hand, what happened to it? I don't know. Satan, I command your power broken over this hand. I release the anointing of the spirit. What you feel is the fire of the Holy Ghost going around your hand. Let her be free right now. Right now, right now, it's the power of God, the anointing of the Spirit going through you. You are free. Madam, look at me. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I am free. I am free. Now wind your hand as wide as you can. Go ahead. Don't think about it. Go ahead. Total freedom. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Could you do this before? No. The Lord heals you right now. Yes. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. For no man can enter a man's house and spoil the goods except he first binds the strong man. That's why I said, for if it is true that Satan is the only resistance, then nothing stops your healing. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Oh dear, we are out of time. Guys, there's really no room for the ministers to come in. But I'd like us to pray. Hallelujah. We really, really are out of time. This is past nine. This meeting tonight is supposed to change you. It's supposed to bring something out of your life. Are you listening to me? So what we're going to do right now, because we don't have time, is... Um, the ministers, in the few minutes that we have, they'll just move through the crowd so that the people they would have brought on, they can just minister to them while I just minister to everyone in mass. Is that correct? Is that okay? So we'll be doing that right now. Please, ministers, just go. As the Lord directs you, just walk through the crowd and minister to the people, please, so that we can save time. Hallelujah. Now, all of you, listen to me. Let's do it really, really fast. Hallelujah. Now, I want to release... Did you bring prayer requests? No. You did? Okay, well, we only do it as the Spirit leads. Okay, but quickly, quickly. Ushers, at the same time, we are doing all of this at the same time. You are submitting your prayer request if you don't have any right one quickly and concentrate while the ministers, please walk through the crowd by the Spirit and just minister. We have to do this real fast. We took our time to teach the word. You are four ladies in your family. No one is married. Is part of your request. Run out here quickly. Four ladies. No one is married. Four ladies. Inside and outside. Please make sure you are listening. Four ladies. No one is married. And even you right now, you are not married. You have been praying for it. Run out. You came here for God to give you a miracle. You believe that? You believe God gives you a miracle? I want you to know that God will terminate everything that looks like delay. Any other person, please come quickly. Hallelujah. The Lord himself. Do you understand? There is the fragrance of the spirit of God that comes upon you. The Bible says, Isaac speaking said, the smell of my son is like the field that the Lord has blessed. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you right now. I'd like you to believe by the faith of the son of God that God himself is going to terminate. You will be very surprised. It will look like magic. It's the power of God. Are you listening to me? If you go to a native doctor in, where, did they, where are the people in Zaria? Where did they reside? In Zaria City. And ask him, let me tell you, he will do some incantations for you and you will find out that you are married. But God himself is mightier than any man. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands, all of you in front. Lord, I command that manifestation of Satan over your family to be gone. I see a lot of oppression in your family. Come, please. I need a lady. I need a lady. Any, come, come to the front, please. Just lay your hands on her stomach. That's what I need. 
just lift your hands. You just lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, be free from that wickedness in your family. Be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I set you free. Help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, be free now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free for your family right now. We command supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, supernatural marriages by the power of the Holy Spirit. Supernatural marriages for everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please write it quickly because we want to do an impartation now. And there's still an announcement. Please don't be quick to go. There is a very important announcement you must communicate. Hallelujah. Write your prayer request quickly. We want to do an impartation so that you don't fall on someone writing this. I don't know how hungry you are for more of the anointing of the Spirit. Are you listening to me? I don't know how hungry you are. The ministers are ministering to pastors. Are, the ministers are ministering to people. There's no time. Oh, okay. You receive it too. Oh, you receive the anointing and you are touching her. You do it for her. Okay, go ahead. Pray for her. In the name of Jesus, we declare the power of the Holy Spirit through you to her. In the name of Jesus, healing and perfection. And may that anointing not leave you. From today, look at me. I'm prophesying to you. Any lady you lay hands on, you will release supernatural marriages and restoration. If you believe that, lift your hands. Because you have stood in the ushering department, I command that this dimension of impartation comes upon your life. You will see it happen and you will be surprised. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Worshippers, are we ready to pray? Worshippers, I think you should receive something to hold your hands together. Hallelujah. Worship team, let's start with you. An anointing and an impartation upon you. Hallelujah. For greater grace, for greater dimension. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk. There is an angel I see standing close to me that brings the anointing of the Holy Spirit for you people. Hallelujah. I'm just going to walk and stretch my hands and I see the power of God. I see Steve Strings. The Lord tells me you are stepping into a strange order. A strange order. Hallelujah. Worship people, are you ready? Please just lift your hands as I move in the name of Jesus. Let that anointing flow to you. Let it flow to you. Let it flow to you. Every one of you, let it flow to you. Steve, let it flow to you. Mike, let it flow. Sheye, Tosin, go ahead. Yinka, everyone, I release it. Receive it now. Now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive it now, an impartation. You begin to sing like angels by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is an activation upon you. In the name of Jesus, we release this anointing upon the koinonia worship team. You begin to function in an order of power. Your worship begins to take the house to a new level of grace, a new level of power. Every worshiper in the crowd, this anointing touches you right now. Everyone, please leave, put your hands down if you are not singing. Every worshiper, now I release that anointing. If you are a worshiper here, lift your hands. Let that anointing flow. Right now to every worshiper, I command new songs. Come out of your spirit, man. Come out of your spirit, man. New songs. Everyone in the ministry of worship, I stir it up. This fire, this anointing. Receive it, receive it, receive it like a mighty rushing wind inside and outside. Parekete bokoto pakasa, ranta baka pariyakatai. A new order of worshippers, a new order of spiritual people. Pataka pateke pato zepaya. Outside, I see the anointing of God flowing on some of you outside. Outside. Through the window, I stretch my hands. Let the anointing hit every worshiper. Now, 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 now. Let new songs arise. Let new songs. 
a new pattern of worship will be introduced to the body of Christ. A new pattern. Heavenly songs. For the instrumentalists, you will no longer pray instruments. You will be worshippers upon the mistral. Go ahead, Steve, and play. Just the, just the guitar. Go ahead and flow. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. Mass impartations. Lift your hands. I'm going to release the fire of God. An apostolic fire. A prophetic fire. A healing anointing. Get ready. Lift up your hands. Now receive it. Receive it. Take it in the name of Jesus. Right now. Right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus, take it, take it, lift your hands, everyone, take it. Take it, 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 Fire upon your spirit. Take it, take it, The spirit of prophecy, receive it, receive it. The prophetic spirit, the prophetic anointing, receive it, the prophetic anointing. After the count of three, the spirit of prayer and supplication will fall upon the house. Prayer lives will be activated right now. At the count of three, one, two, intercessors, arise, 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 receive the quickening of the spirit. Receive quickening. Upon your spirit, man. Great intercessors, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer, men of prayer, women of prayer. Let the fountains be broken from your spirit. Let the fountains be broken. Hallelujah. Sorry we are taking time. We'll soon be out of here. I want to release the healing anointing. Many of you will step into a strange order of healing. That will make you afraid. If God be God tonight. Then it comes upon you. Lift your hands as high. As it can get. For it will come upon many. Including your little children I see. Let the healing anointing. Flow. 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 Let no one be left. Let the healing power. Reketete, Let it flow outside. I stretch my hands to you. Receive it outside. Receive it. The healing anointing outside. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it.
I want to pray over your finances. Make sure you're standing for your loved ones. Enough of struggling. It's not by power. Isaiah 45 verse 3. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. Deuteronomy 8, 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee the power, the anointing, the, the ability. There is an anointing to prosper. Lift your hands, everybody. Please receive it. Please, please. We need it. I always do this. We need a prosperous generation standing for your loved ones. With this anointing, let every debt, I don't care how much, for you and your family, let every debt be canceled. Receive it strong. I pray for you. Receive it strong. For the Lord gave it to me. The Lord gave it to me. And tonight, for the love I have for you, I declare, receive it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Receive it. Let it flow. Prosperity in your business. Favor. The Esther anointing. The Esther anointing. I, re I release it with all my heart. I release it. I release it. Strange order of wealth, of favor, of prosperity. Receive it. Receive it. Those of you standing in for your loved ones. Those of you standing in for your loved ones, families. If your family has suffered financially and you think enough is enough, lift your hands. Lift your hands. If you think your family has struggled, hear me, I don't care what your father is doing or what your mother is doing. For it is the Lord that can empower a man. And tonight, if I be a servant of God, if I be sent by the anointing of the Spirit, out of the virtue that he has put, I invoke it from the heavens. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Your families will enter a strange order of favor a strange order of prosperity. Even if you are the only one sponsoring yourself from today, stop struggling. Move forward. I give you a prophetic push into the next level of kingdom wealth and prosperity. Hallelujah. Everything that represents a delay in your life, whether marriage, whether relationship, whether job, you are on a contract, they are supposed to sign it, they have not signed it. Right now, Makapa Reketo, Rente Kabariata, Aproscope Rekete, Barika Positai. Under this anointing, I command every closed door be open in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. From tonight, I declare that you will step into a level of favor. The Bible says, and Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. A strange order of favor where strangers, including your enemies, will work to bless you 
Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. All of you who are workers here, you have a job. All of you who are workers, it's time for the people around you to know that the Lord has honored you. Listen, we'll start with those who are lecturers. If you're a student here and your father is a lecturer or your mother, you can stand in for them. We want, I don't care what the system is from the Senate. We want to legislate certain things here by the prophetic altar of God's spirit. Lift your hands. You're a lecturer or you're standing in for a lecturer. Enough is enough that anyone that has been due for promotion and has been delayed by the wickedness of men. The Bible says in Job 5, it will deliver you from the scourging tongues of men. For there is a, a God that can set a man down and lift another man up right now. Under this anointing of the spirit. Promotion comes neither from the east, nor the south, nor the west. I command my father and my king. Supernatural promotion upon every lecturer. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. That day, that day that conspire against you, hear me, that day that conspire against you will find themselves working for your good. I command it in the name of Jesus. I command it in the name of Jesus. Please, where is Stanley, Bishop? The Lord brings a new degree of honor for you. No, I want to pray for you first. The Lord brings for you a new degree and a new order of honor. The Lord says, I should tell you, for the times of faithfulness have been measured. And your faithfulness is speaking. A strange order of honor is what the Lord brings. And I pray in the name of Jesus, let this strange anointing come upon you and mantle you to bring you honor beyond your imagination. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to round up quickly. Please, there is an important announcement we are going to communicate right now. Hallelujah. You are here, you are not born again. You have not given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. You have not given your heart to the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I pray right now, listen to me, inside and outside, you are here and you are not born again. We love you. The Lord does not condemn you. It's time for you to come home and start a new life with the Lord. Inside and outside, or you have given your heart to the Lord, but you have found yourself derailing from the path of the Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I encourage you, Please, let's all rise before we sit down. Let's all rise. Everyone, come out quickly and stand. Everyone who belongs in that category, you want to give your heart to the Lord or you are making a commitment, please appreciate them as they come. Appreciate them. Leave your seat inside and outside. This is the greatest miracle. Appreciate them. The Lord is talking to you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Welcome them. We welcome you home. You're welcome home. You're welcome home. No man condemns you. God is still speaking to some other people. You are welcome. We will wait for you. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am so delighted in my heart for all of you who have come out to indicate an interest to love God and to walk in his ways. The Bible says, all who draw nigh to him, he will in no wise cast away. And I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Lord himself will bring you into a new experience. This is the greatest testimony you will ever have in your life. That you made a decision for Jesus Christ. It's the pivot on which everything in your Christian life and experience will revolve around. So lift your hands after me as we pray this prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare 
that I'm born again. I denounce sin and Satan. I declare that eternal life comes into my spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am one with Christ. I partake of the blessings of redemption. There's power to be called a child of God. The hand of God is upon me. Holy Spirit, come and find abode in me. Make a vessel and a treasure out of me. I declare that I'm born again in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, preserve these ones. You have brought them by your spirit. Preserve them. Holy Spirit, I pray that you teach them the principles of the kingdom and make generals out of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Appreciate them. This is the greatest decision you have ever made. Hold on, hold on. Please, I'd like you to just follow the ushers one moment. They'll just have your names and your contact details and we'll reach you. You'll do that very quickly. Hallelujah. Now, Stanley, please, there is a project that we are going to begin. Please, everybody listen. This is very important. Just a few minutes. I know we've taken our time. I'm really sorry. But how many of you think it's worth it? Hallelujah. Okay, so just listen to Stanley. He's going to be passing a very important announcement. Please sit down inside and outside. We'll soon be out. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.